Structures like general and how Poisson Neuhaus structures. So I will begin just by uh, remembering very briefly what is a Poisson Neuhaus structure is. So the, the motivation, like historically, was like to construct integrals for Hamiltonian systems. So if you begin with a symplectic structure, we have on the background a Poisson structure. You can put these two together just by defining uh, one one tensor okay. you, was, you, you ask for some compatibility between these two structures it's just that when you look to the Poisson structure corresponding to the symplectic structure it must commute this scouting Neuhaus bracket with the, the, the other one okay so this implies that the Neuhaus tensor torsion of this uh, R vanishes. So just let me remember briefly what is the Neuhaus torsion. So you have this tensor which is vanish. So this is another bracket. It would be convenient to write it this way. Can you lift the board a bit? What? They lift the board. Oh, oh I'm sorry. So this is a bracket on the tangent bundle. I mean, this this vanishing is equivalent to saying that this bracket defines a, a Lie algebraic structure on TM. So. This compatibility implies that the Neuhaus torsion vanishes. And the way you construct integrals for the system, just by taking traces, traces of powers of this R. And you can prove that this Poisson commutes, these functions Poisson commutes with each other. So, Many completely integrable systems arise in this way. Uh, also, there are some works uh, of Bonacci and collaborators, like constructing quantization of some, some special class of Poisson structures using this framework. And I strongly suggest you to, to see Bonacci's talk in Global Poisson Seminar to learn more about that. I will not be talking about much about uh, geometry, about uh, these structures. I'm only interested in the compatibility uh, of the Poisson and the, the R. Okay, so to, to generalize these uh, constructions, you, you just you now are interested in how pi and R relate with each itself. So now we have a Poisson, a Poisson structure in R. Okay. And you ask for the compatibility between these two structures. So they are compatible. If they satisfy first an algebraic equation, just saying that the this this map from T star M from T M is symmetric, so it defines a bivector field. And you have a kind of strange uh, tensor field which generalizes this compatibility condition here, which is called the Magri Morosi concomitant. If you write this, do it. This must be zero. 
So the, the motivation of the, this talk is try to understand this very strange dancer. Okay. And, and, and of course, I mean this is this is my house. Uh, yeah, there is a minus missing in the in the A. Or there is a minus. What you said is Q symmetric. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, if, if you if you dualize it, you see that because of the minus of the pi. Ah, okay. <laughs> the basic symmetry. Yeah. So, uh, in the literature, I mean, the, the, it is more common to see another concomitant. This is the Michael Morosi concomitant, which is which appears in the, in the work where, where they define these these structures. But it's more common to see just a remark. It's more common to see the dual of this concomitant. This pair this of a, a, a one, uh, one form against this, this tensor, you get the usual concomitant which appears in the literature. And this is just the Yeah, just writing this way, I mean, you have a bivector field because of the algebraic uh, uh, compatibility. You just take the, the corresponding uh, bracket on one form, and this is the this is the deformation of the usual uh, Poisson bracket on one form, using exactly the same the same construction used here. Okay, so this is the the usual way we present the, the concomitant. So let me let me say what I I'm, I will try to do today. So, so the point is the following: if you start if you start with a Poisson manifold, like a Poisson Neuhaus manifold, this is uh, Poisson Neuhaus. You can look to the symplectic groupoid integrating this Poisson. I, 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 I always suppose that the, all my Lie algebraids appearing in this talk are integrable. So you can, you can look to the symplectic group point integrating this Poisson. And there is uh, a result of TNO and Shu where they integrate this, this Neuhaus structure to a symplectic Neuhaus structure on the group point. So the point is that now you can you can think that you can kind of degenerate this symplectic structure to two other structures. A Poisson and a presymplectic one. Okay? It makes perfect sense for you to to to, to put a Neuhaus structure. So we have like a Poisson Neuhaus groupoid. And you have a pressing black to Neuhaus group point. Okay. But now you can also, downstairs, I mean, infinitesimally, you can also define some kind of degeneration of the Poisson. So here you have Levi algebra. talk today was to try to understand what appears infinitesimally when you put these structures on the group point. So what appears to you? So how can you make sense of a compatibility between Neuhaus structures and different structures and also in okay. So the main point of the talk is try to construct the structures which sees infinitesimally this compatibility on the group point. Okay. So some kind of integration and, and differentiation result. And of course, I mean, there is some, some relationship between these two structures here. It's just the algebra. Okay. So there is some relationship 
Okay. So I'm also interested in see how you can put some kind of compatibility between my house structures and current algebra is also in the picture. Where did press simplicity come from in the picture earlier? Uh, I'm just I'm just thinking uh, I'm, I'm kind of changing the the, the simplicity form to press simplicity ones. I mean this is the result of first in Krynik, Weinstein and Zoo, the disintegration, the press simplicity to, to, to Dirk. And here uh, this is Mackenzie's shoe, of course. Okay. And one point is that is it, it will be very important to, uh, to us is that under this uh, under this uh, formalism you can treat uh, holomorphic Poisson, okay. because the condition, I mean, w when you look to holomorphic Poisson, the the real part is always Poisson Neuhaus with, res with respect to the complex structure. Okay, this will be very important. So here, we already have a result about uh, integration of uh, Poisson holomorphic groupoids and Lie holomorphic uh, bialgebroids. But here you don't. You don't have uh, integration of holomorphic Dirac structures to holomorphic persimplectic groupoids. Okay. So just, just to make sure I understand, so also when you look at generalized complex structures and you get a one one tensor and bivector, vector, there are also examples of these. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Well, your example of this, but the Neuhaus torsion is not zero necessarily. Not exactly, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. The Neuhaus torsion is not zero. The Neuhaus torsion I mean, of what? What? Neuhaus oh, Diagonal elements of the com generalized complex. This one. Yeah. It's not zero. Okay, the main gadget to understand this compatibility downstairs, it will be the notion of one derivation. So I will be a little more technical. So one derivations. As the name suggests, this comes from a hierarchy of derivations. I mean, you have zero derivations, which are actual derivations on a, on a vector bundle. But uh, this one, uh, you can define it like this. These are, these are triples. Okay. Where this D, this D is, I mean, you have a vector bundle, of course. This D takes sections of the vector bundle. It gives you one forms on M with values on the vector bundle. This L is an endomorphism of the vector bundle. And this this R is just a one form with values on TM. Okay, so this is this is our, the triples. Plus a compatibility between them, which is just Leibniz, kind of Leibniz condition. Where you have if you if you take a function on M and you do something like this, now you have, you evaluate the function against a section. You have this kind of uh, the kind of strange Leibniz condition where here appears the L and the R. I usually I usually refer to this L and R as a symbol of the of the one derivation. Okay. Oh, there in, in that definition, uh, I can think of a EDM, no, like a, a e detergent bundle. Yeah, is is there a map from E to TM? No, in principle. Is there, is there a map of, of what? From E to TM. No, no. From E to TM. No. E to TM. Ah, e to TM. No, 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 no. This is this is just like yeah, yeah. This is this is this part is maps from T from TM from TM to E. I see. But then uh, I, I can see the L from E to E. Exactly. Yeah. R to, from TM, TM to TM. TM. Exactly. And then isn't this compatibility like a commutative square with D? No. I mean, I have from E plus M plus TM to E plus TM a map yeah. with the LR. And how is it? 
Does it help thinking ideas? I mean, we will see in the minutes uh, another interpretation of these boundary variations, which, which, which is more like this, this kind of map uh, construction. Let me just give some, some examples. This as a derivation in a two-term graded vector bundle. Yeah, so I mean, somehow, yeah. I mean, they come they come from 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 uh, linear linear uh, tensor fields. Somehow, they are like infinitesimal infinitesimal components of like linear tensor fields on the on the, on the tangent bundle of the vector bundle. Okay. R zero, this becomes like a uh, and a, a, a effective value yeah, if, if R is zero in L is like the identity, this is just a connection. Let me give some, some examples. So the first example exactly is a connection. Okay, so a connection with L equals the identity in R equals zero. Okay, and it just puts. This. This, is, this is a one derivation. Another example, which will be the most important to us, comes from comes from uh, endomorphism of TM. This is the this this will be a one derivation on TM. And the formula is just you take the derivative of the R with respect to to epsilon. This is the one derivation also. Okay. And the other one, which is also very important, is when you have a holomorphic vector bundle. Okay. So usually you can pack this holomorphic vector bundle with a triple, which is a T01 connection. I mean the, the, the base is, is complex. So R will be the, the complex structure on the base. L will be multiplication by, by I on the fiber. And this would be like I multiplication. And the D corresponding to this to this uh, to this structure is just taking minus L of the connection applied to the section. So you see that the D encodes the holomorphic sections of the of the vector bundle. And you can see you can see sections of the vector bundle which are holomorphic only by looking to the sections which D is zero. So in the second example, L is zero. L? L is only R. L equal R. Because you are on the you are on the tangent bundle. You see? G equals TM, right? What? G equals TM. Yeah, yeah, equal, yeah exactly. <laughs> so there is some construction you can do with this do with these uh, one derivations which will be very important As I said, I mean, you, these are infinitesimal components of like the linear one-one tensor field. So, so one derivations correspond. I mean, one-one correspondence with endomorphisms of the tangent bundle of the vector bundle, which are linear with respect to this other structure, which is the tangent bundle. We have this R here. Okay, they are appearing in the one derivation. Yeah. It's just what curves here. The L will be exactly how K acts on the fiber on the tangent to the fibers. Okay. And this D comes from like the first order of K along the, the zero section. Okay, so this is so when you when you see in examples. Like 
this. So in the first example, k is just a projection along uh, on the horizontal on the uh, vertical direction along the horizontal direction. Okay, just is just a projection. On the vertical along horizontal. The B this is this is just uh, corresponding to what's called the, the tangent lift of a uh, of uh, well one tensor. So when you when you have uh, R, you can lift it just by by doing something like this. R tangent. Here you have the canonical involutions of the double tangent bundle. So you have a, a, a morphism like this. This is linear, and this corresponds to this, to this dr. And of course, c is just the, is just the complex structure that you have on the total space on the total space of the tangent bundle of a homomorphic vector bundle. Before talking about the, before talking about the, how this can be used to interpret to interpret this uh, Neuhaus compatibility is duality. There is a duality operation in this space of one derivations. I mean, this just corresponds to the fact that zero derivations, I mean, you have a duality between linear vector fields on, on E and linear vector fields on E star, I mean, just by dualizing the derivation. Okay. So you have, a, you have a, a nice, if you have a one derivation on E, you obtain a one derivation on E star. So the symbol will just be the same R, but L will be the L dual. So the formula is very simple. You use the symbol in this kind of du dualization. How this uh, how this duality operates on these examples. So, in the first one, I mean, we, I just have uh, the, the the dual connection on E star, and K will be just a projection along the the vertical of, of E star along the, the, the horizontal. The second one, which, is, which will be the most important, so A is just A star, so just the the, the dual connection. B corresponds to B corresponds to when you apply this to the dr you see that just exactly what appears on the concomitant of Magri Morosi you see and uh, the tangent I mean just a cotangent lift, which can be seen just as a map when you have the canonical. Okay. So you have you have something like this: the canonical two form on T star M. You have this. Cotangent lift, and this is just using R, R star to pull back the canonical form on, on T star M. Okay, so this is 
what's called the cotangent lift. Okay? And of course, C, when you have a holomorphic vector bundle, E star is a holomorphic vector bundle, and this dual will be exactly the, the, the complex structure of the dual of the holomorphic vector bundle. So, okay, I have all the ingredients. Great. I'm lost. <laughs> So let's re revisit Poisson Neuhaus with this with these gadgets. Okay. So remember the the concomitant was something like there was this expression, this kind of strange expression. But now, with these one derivations, I can see this just as some kind of commutation relation, okay? Because this is exactly the dr star, so this can be right. And this is exactly the dr. Remember, dr was just taking there. It's just taking the derivative of r. So this is just. So that makes much more sense. Okay. And looking to these interpretations of, uh, of these structures as coming from uh, one tensors, one one tensors, this is just this equivalent to have some commutative diagram. I mean, not just this, I mean this and also the commutation of the vanishing of this, right? Yeah, of course, the vanishing. Yeah. The vanishing. These two are equivalent to a commutative diagram where we have the cotangent lift here, you have TTM. Yeah, the double tangent bundle. Here you just have the tangent of, the, of pi sharp. And here you just have TR. This is the tangent lift here. TR, or, or, or the tangent lift. The tangent, exactly. Okay. That of TR. Yeah. Okay. So, if you, if you are uh, accustomed to Lie algebraic morphisms, you can identify this as some kind of uh, commutation with the anchor of the, the, I mean, you have this Lie algebraic morphism, and Lie algebraic structure of this time coming from the Poisson. You have the tangent Lie algebraic, and this is just saying that R cotangent commutes with the anchor of this Lie algebraic. Okay? So the remark is that Poisson Neuhaus is equivalent to this R cotangent being a Lie algebra morph between these tangent Lie algebraids. Okay. And of course, it's, it's well known that the uh, uh, R cotangent is, is itself Poisson Neuhaus with respect to the, to the canonical uh, two form on the tangent bundle. Okay. And when you look to this, to this. Uh, Definition of the this is clear because you are composing. Uh, I mean, at least this, at least this uh, condition, because you are composing the canonical two form with architecture, and it, you you are getting something which is Q symmetric. This is just a pullback. Okay. 
So also, R cotangent. And this is, of course, I mean, this is a linear Poisson structure on T star M. So, so the, the corresponding Lie algebraic structure on TM is exactly the one coming from the deformation of the brackets. Okay, so linear Poisson. And this is the bracket on TM. Okay. Let me just So we are close to identify how you can phrase Poisson Neuhaus in this Lie by algebra context. I mean, I mean, we already have we already have something in the literature, which is the Cosmos Schwarzbach relationship between Poisson Neuhaus and Lie by algebra structures on on TN with this bracket, deformation bracket and the T star and the T star N with the Poisson bracket. Okay. So remember. That, let's, let's just start saying something about Lie algebraics. Just very quickly, a Lie algebra is a pair of Lie of Lie algebraics in, co in correspondence. Okay, I mean in, in duality. I'm sorry. So you have a Lie algebra structure here and a Lie algebra structure on the dual. And if you look to the linear Poisson structure corresponding to A. As a map, okay, these two guys have Lie algebraic structures because they are the cotangent bundle of a Lie algebra, the tangent bundle of a Lie algebra, and you ask for this to be a Lie algebra morphism. Of course, one, the first example, example A, is just Tn and T star n with a Poisson structure, the bracket coming from a Poisson structure. This is actually saying that this canonical Poisson structure on T star is a is a Lie algebraic morphism. So now you see that the effect result is immediately is an immediate consequence of, of this fact, of the fact that Poisson, oh, I didn't write that, but me, right? this is let me write it here. Right? Poisson tangent the algebra morphism. And this is the upshot of this first part. So you see, putting all this together, I mean, being like a Poisson Neuhaus, so Poisson Neuhaus implies that TM with the, with the deformation bracket in T star M with pi is a Lie by algebra. Simply because you, you are composing Lie algebraic morphisms. You are composing these Lie algebraic morphisms coming from the Poisson. And we are composing our cotangent, which is a Lie algebra morphism. But also the other way around. Only simply because this is invertible. It comes from a two form. So, so if this is a Lie algebra morphism, you can compose to the inverse, and you get that the cotangent, the cotangent lift is a Lie algebra morphism, which is equivalent to being Poisson Neuhaus. Okay, so this is. Result, which comes almost for free under this interpretation. Okay. So <clears throat> the main definition in this point 
It's just the definition of what is a Lee Neuhaus algebra by algebra. Okay. So a Lee Neuhaus by algebra is just a, of course, a Lee algebra, a Lee by algebra endowed with a one one tensor, which is linear. You, you ask, of course, for this to be a Lie algebraic morphism. And also, it's dual in this sense that I just defined. Both a Lie algebraic morphisms. Okay. And, you, and you also ask for the vanishing of the of the Neuhaus torsion of this okay so of course Poisson Neuhaus gives one of these Lee Neuhaus by algebra just by looking to Tm T star M because we have the arc tangent which is trivially a Lie algebra morphism arc cotangent which is just saw that is a Lie algebra morphism and the fact that the, vanish, the, the Neuhaus tangent torsion of R uh, vanishes is, uh, is gives a, a directly that the, the Neuhaus torsion of both the tangent and the cotangent lift vanishes. Okay, this, I mean, it seems that's not symmetric, but it is, because the vanish of one implies the vanish of the other. Okay. So these are morphisms with respect to the structure over Tm, not the tangent algebra, right? The tangent algebra. I mean, this, they are morphisms, TM. both Tm and, and A, because they are one-one tensors. So they are like, they are the bundle morphs of the tangent, covering the identity on, on A, but they also cover, the, they are also vector bundle morphs with respect to the tangent bundle, uh, tangent bundle structure. But the algebra compatibility is only in one direction. So because this is the by algebra. Yeah, of course, I mean, it's only on one, in one direction, yeah. yeah. I, think, I think you can prove that if it's a Lie algebra morphism with respect to the tangent, it must be the, the tangent of some, some function. Some diffeomorphism mm -hmm. field somehow. Okay, so here we identify what you can put downstairs. I mean, this is just this structure. We have you have exactly the By algebraics are in one one corresponds to Poisson Neuhaus groupoids. Okay. When you have a Lie Neuhaus by algebra, you integrate the Lie, the, the Lie by algebra to a Poisson groupoid, and then this, this case integrates to a Neuhaus structures on, on, on the groupoid, and the compatibility is exactly the fact that the dual is a Lie algebraic morphism. The point. So, as a example of this, we obtain integration of holomorphic Lie by algebra. Holomorphic Poisson group. Okay, this is just uh, an example. Theorem. So this finishes this first part. Okay. So let us focus on, on this one. So this Levi algebraic condition is completely symmetric. This Lie algebraic one. The Levi algebra, the the Lian Huis. So if one of the Levi, yeah, we are symmetric. So yeah, we're just talking. I mean, you you have, for example, if if you have an integration of a star. This also comes with a Poisson Neuhaus group of structure, of course, because they are. You just integrate the dual. And what are you supposed to get on the symplectic double groupoid? That's a good question. Yeah, that's a good question. 
yeah. some somehow some double symplectic Neuhaus. I mean, you, you, I don't know how the how the the symplectic Neuhaus structures coming from both Poisson Neuhaus like com are compatible on the double symplectic. But it's a, it's a very good question. Yeah. We are just talking these days about that. So Dirac Neuhaus structures, I mean, we have all the ingredients. By seeing Poisson uh, via its graph, okay, the compatibility condition here, I mean, can all be phrased using a one-run derivation, but now on Tm plus T star M. If you put all, all together, well, this will be the L, and of course R is just R. Okay. So this gives you one derivation, one derivation on Tm plus T star M. Okay. In being post, being uh, compatible with this uh, this structure just means that if you have a a Dirac structure. You ask for a, an algebraic equation, which is the equivalent to that. Just asking for this r r star preserves l, okay. And this concomitant condition is just equivalent for this this big one derivation preserving the sections of of the, the Lagrangian. Oops, okay. <coughs> So can be this definition extend to the twisted case? Yes, yes. I mean, I'm not using anything about the Neuhaus torsion here. This is just, I mean, you, you can start with like a Lagrangian, you can start with a woman tensor, and just say that they are compatible if they satisfy this. Okay? Putting the, the integrability conditions is something you do after. And you can also make sense of, uh, of the twists. I don't have time to talk about it, but we can talk later. But it, but it can make sense of the twists. So let, let, me, let me give some examples. I'm approaching the end. First time cross country and first time using this <laughs> machine. <laughs> this, this trip is lots of first timers. <laughs> Just look to the graph, the, the conditions are exactly the same. But now you also have uh, presymplectic forms. Okay? So omega presymplectic. In the conditions here, A, of course, is just commutation of omega as a map with R. In the, the compatibility, with this D, big D, it's just saying that if you differentiate, this, this gives you a two form now, because this is exactly saying that this, is, this comes from a skew-symmetric map, which is a two form. So if you look to the, the, the run differential of this two form, this must be equal to the, the run differential of omega, but also twisted by this R. You just put R in the first entry. Okay, it's just the, the conditions there. This is uh, equivalent, equivalent to what is called omega n structures by Magen Morosi in their paper. Okay, omega n structures. In the case, is zero, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, it, when when I mean, I'm, I'm I'm here just doing very general. I mean, I'm just asking to be. But I mean, when we say press you, 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 you are saying that the omega is zero. Yeah. Here, just two-fold. Two yeah. 
<laughs> because yeah, of course, I mean this is this is just saying that this form will be closed if the uh, the omega is closed. So omega is a constant right two form. Yeah. Or what? No, I mean it can be to any two form. Yeah, any two form. Any two form. I mean just the, the uh, I'm taking the graph of a two form as a Dirac structure. Just that. Okay. It's more like pre pre symplectic. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. If I have, to, if I have time, I, 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 I will make also a comment about that at the end. But let me just say that if you have a complex structure, of course, and you look to this map from T m, big T m, no, you, you usually call this like this. So the same one, but now you uh, look into the one zero components just taking x and alpha to one half so look into this map the here the dn the Dirac Neuhaus structures on this side corresponds to the holomorphic Dirac structures on this side These are the main examples. Okay. So let, let, let me just mention that, I am, I'm not right that, but just, let me just mention that there are a bunch of nice properties this Dirac Neuhaus have. I mean, they, for example, the press simplectic foliation comes with a, with a Neuhaus uh, operator, which is compatible. I mean, the, the, the leaves are press simplectic Neuhaus. The quotients also can, can, be, can, be, can inherit a Neuhaus operator, which makes the quotient Poisson Neuhaus. Okay? And you can also construct hierarchies of these uh, direct structures. But, both, but, but in both sides, I mean, you can, you can for example, re recover the, the hierarchies of Poisson by, by just looking to the, uh, applying R to this part. But you can also recover hierarchies of Persimplectic, which is applying R star to the other side. Okay, so you have like a kind of two kinds of hierarchies of this, of this. So the main, the main theorem. Yeah, have you thought about applying this to these implicit Hamiltonian systems in integral of motions going to the original motivation of Poisson and Hoyce? Yeah, I mean, yeah. The I mean, we we. We, we are lacking examples connecting this theory with this kind of like completely integrable part of the story. I mean, we, we work some properties and stuff, but I mean, we don't have much uh, application of these constructions, but I mean, they are potentially like uh, useful to, to study. Mechanical systems. I'll be very quick here. So, the theorem is that these DNs are in one one correspondence with first implanted Neuhaus groupoids. I mean, you can integrate so this part of the story, so the researchers, this plus is just this compatibility condition, and you can integrate that to first implanted Neuhaus and differentiate. Okay, so of course, example. Integration of holomorphic Dirac structure. And I will just, I will just give a brief sketch of the proof because it's going to be important to tell you, to tell you about this current algebra. So the point is that if you look to this dr, this condition here is equivalent for the linear 1 1 tensor corresponding to that, which is just the cotangent lift and the tangent lift. So preserve the sections of L. So this is exactly the same of this to, to this condition here. Okay? And there's a bunch of equations which DR satisfies, which immediately implies that this guy is a Lie algebra morphism which integrates 
to the to the parasympathetic group void as a Neuhaus operator compatible with the parasympathetic structure. So that's it. Okay. So the point is that this guy here satisfy, satisfies a bunch of nice equations, which leads you immediately to a definition of what is a current algebra compatible with a Neuhaus operator. Okay. So I just. I'm just in this last. So, definition a current one derivation. So of course, I mean you have a you have a you have a current algebra So this is a big DLR. Okay, let me put it like this. So it must be self-dual with respect to this to this metric. Okay, it satisfies a bunch of equations with respect to this this guy, which comes naturally. I mean, it just comes naturally from the generalization of the equations this guy satisfies, okay? And, and that's it. Okay, so example. <coughs> DR, of course. If you take A A star, Ali Neuhaus by algebra, and take the co current algebra corresponding to the double, okay? Then this big D, which is D, D dual, also satisfies. And the most important one, very intriguing, is the following. I just, uh, one minute. You can, you can twist this DR with a metric, Riemannian a metric. So, Let's put it like this. G, a Riemannian metric. And this is just dr, of course. One of, one of the equations here uh, implies that, implies that the, the component on, on the tangent bundle must be dr, but you, can, you, can, you have freedom on the cotangent part. Mm -hmm. And this is, let's put it like this. So this is just dr x y, dr star alpha, and the metric applied to the Levice-Vita uh, connection with uh, y. The L will be r, r star, plus g. Okay, so you put g also on the L part. And r, of course, is r. Okay. So the equations that this this guy must satisfy in here, they, I mean, this part is automatic, but the part coming from the metric are equivalent for the vanishing of the torsion, the metric being uh, compatible with the, the the connection being compatible with the metric, okay, and first the Bianchi equations, okay, it's just that. But the interesting part is if you ask for the corresponding one one tensor to be almost complex, this guy defines a Cayley metric, okay? And it's automatic, like integrable. I mean, so you, you, can, you, you don't even ask for the vanishing of the Neuhaus torsion of the linear part. Only almost complex implies automatic uh, integrability in Cayley uh, uh, equations, okay? So this is very intriguing. I, I mean, I don't know if this is the, the start of a story, but it's, it's kind of very nice. Okay, that's it. Questions? Yeah. Uh, in this compatibility of Dirac nine holes, uh, what, what, can you repeat it again? Sorry, it is. Uh, the compatibility. The compatibility? Yeah. Ah. You just ask for this map to preserve L, yeah. 
you have this big DR, which comes from, from DR and DR star, to preserve the sections. And then, uh, just making a connection with the previous talk and VDL, etc. Can't you see this as a community diagram of VDL? Yeah, I mean, this is, this is just saying, I mean, as, I, as, I, as I said here, I mean, this is, somehow this is related with the fact that this map here is a, is a, is a VB algebra morphism between TL and TL. So, so L is, is, a, is a Lie algebraic because it's a Dirac structure. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so this d, d just means exactly as as being. So you move from T star L to T L. T star L to T L, like the two form, uh, ion two form, that it gives you the Dirac structure, no? because it's the same as a Lie algebra with a, an ion two form. Ah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So yeah. from T star L to T L. And then it's as if uh, the the nine hole, nine holes the extractor goes from but the cotangent and the tangent. I mean this square that is Yeah maybe, maybe, yeah, yeah. Thinking about the two form yeah. coming from this IM two form of the direct structure. I mean for the Poisson case you do have this commutative square. Yeah. You know? That uh, it appears in the paper. Yeah. But uh, have you thought of, of an analog of this? A very short description as a commutative square for the case of Dirac? No. No, no. But I mean, it, it seems it seems that that it must hold. It must hold. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So maybe another question. So in the Poisson case, uh, the Nijian Fuss structures includes uh, 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 complex structures. Yeah. My question is, in the current case, is there any way to include uh, this current one derivation generalized complex structures? Oh, I forgot to say, I mean, I, uh, I, I, forgot, I, I, mean that I forgot to say that one of the examples here is, of, of course, holomorphic current algebraids. I mean, they, they appear here naturally uh, as, as examples of, of uh, carrying this current one derivation. But the relation with gener generalized complex yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. I suggest that we uh, continue questions over the 10 minute coffee break, which will end at 11.20. And let's thank Tiago for a very interesting talk.